Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode six of the BeagleCast. Today, we have Blot from Imagination Technologies to talk about GPU acceleration. So, hi, Blot. Welcome. Hello. Happy to be here with you guys. Do you want to introduce yourself? Tell us a little bit about what you do at um, Imagination. Sure. I'm Plut Galatsopoulos. I'm Senior Director of Product Management at Imagination. I'm looking after uh, GPU DDK, open source and proprietary drivers, as well as our mobile uh, GPU hardware product line. Awesome. So how, lo how long have you been at uh, Imagination in this role? Um, it's been three years and a bit. Started uh, during COVID in 2020. Awesome. Um, so I, I, I have so many questions. I'm not really sure where, which, where to crack the egg, right? So um, the, the, we use the, uh, the, an imagination core inside the, the Beagle Play, right? In fact, almost all the Beagles have used an imagination uh, GPU. Um, but those of us in the, the Beagle community are super excited about the, you know, what's going to happen with Beagle Play here with the, the, the GPU driver. Um, and can you tell us a little bit about kind of the vision for open source and imagination and, and you know, what, you're, what you're hoping to accomplish ultimately? Uh, sure. So um, open source has been uh, a focus of imagination in the past few years in multiple different aspects, right? So uh, from developing an open source uh, GPU driver, as I mentioned, uh, to participating in uh, RISC-V community and uh, building our own uh, RISC-V uh, CPUs, or even just uh, using uh, existing open source frameworks uh, for AI and ML use cases, for example, like TVM. So we have been embracing uh, open source from multiple different uh, angles, and uh, we can definitely see the value and, uh, and the need to continue doing that in the future. Awesome. Robert, I see you chomping at the bit. Yeah. <laughs> I guess we could talk about kind of the status of things like today, because we know, um, for example, mainline Mesa, we have, uh, there's GPU support that iMesh has been pushing. Uh, for the Beagle Play specifically uh, with TI, we just merged in the, the video bindings. So theoretically in the next month or two on the Beagle Play, we should be able to do a full Power VR open source stack with everything that Imagination's done. And so, it's, you know, for us, it seems like we're just you know going to flip a switch and it just works. But you know, plow it for you, what you've had to deal with all the internals. You know, animation always had you know they support OpenGL, OpenCL, all the stacks, and you've gone from well this has been closed to well now I got to work with the community. I mean, just talking about that story is always kind of interesting. It's like what your team has learned and absolutely all the so pitfalls. We're starting, we are starting the journey with with Vulkan first actually. Um, so that's the the first graphics API, well, graphics and compute API that we are going to, to support uh, in the open source space. And as you're saying, I think we are getting really close to completing the upstreaming of uh, the kernel mode version of the driver. Uh, the user mode uh, part of the driver has already been upstreamed into MISAP some time ago, uh, more than a year ago, actually. Uh, so once we complete uh, the kernel mode side of things, then we will have the first complete uh, native Vulkan driver uh, in the open source space that can uh, run on our uh, rogue GPU architecture. And uh, this is going to support uh, um, one device to begin with. We have been focusing uh, primarily on our uh, AXC116 GPU, uh, but we can easily extend that to all the additional rogue architecture GPUs which is what we plan to do in the following months after that. Uh, and on top of that, we are also going to uh, enable uh, Zinc uh, layer on top of the Vulkan driver so that we can support uh, OpenGL ES as well. Yeah, that's kind of the nice thing about the way Vul the Vulkan stack is Mer, you know, migrate over the last few years. I think when we were first talk, talking with TI and my imagination about you know this open source project, initially it's like, okay, we have to do Vulkan first, then we have to look at OpenCL, OpenGL. But all the Vulkan translation layers have, you know, like FineWine, they've uh, they're clarified so much that you know, as long as you have a really solid Vulkan driver, it's like the community kind of takes care of the other stacks. So, and that's where Zinc will be important for. We could actually have desktop like environment on the Beagle Play and other TI devices and IMAGE GPUs where you just load up, it's running Vulkan, but you're doing OpenGL, OpenCL, 
OpenGL ES. Absolutely. It's as you're saying, I think that uh, lots of the graphics API are now consolidating, uh, uh, you know, under this kind of translation layers and uh, the baseline driver is Vulkan, then you're having uh, all the other APIs supported uh, through these layers. And uh, this has lots of benefits in terms of uh, uh, the effort and the focus that uh, GPU vendors and other experts can put to optimize the, the, the Vulkan driver, then all the other APIs uh, get the same benefits for free if you want. And you get more testing. And if someone wants to run a, you know, a DirectX 9 Vulkan wrapper, it's like, oh, suddenly DirectX 9 works on this too. So it's, yeah, <laughs> yeah it kind of helps spread that. out. And yeah, we, we've seen that even even DirectX, as you mentioned, uh, we have seen you know occasions in the market where uh, people have tried to to emulate that as well. Um, yeah, so possibilities are limitless, I guess. <laughs> well, this this I think may be my chance to ask really stupid questions, or at least try to ex, you know express my incomplete knowledge. Right about I know very little about the Vulcan API. Um, hmm. My understanding is it lets you write some type of of kernels, meaning some type of a uh, small segment of code that you could loop across a large number of you know array of processors of some kind. I don't know if that's accurate in the slightest or not. Um, well, uh, Vulkan driver provides uh, certain benefits. It's uh, a lower level API. Uh, it uh, it can run. Uh, in a multi-threaded environment, uh, as you have hinted. So yeah, there are lots of good performance optimizations that uh, uh, can be utilized and they were not possible with uh, other APIs in the past. But, uh, the, again, I know nothing about Vulkan, right? I just have to like try to guess as to what it might be in order to try to produce um, you know, 3D graphics acceleration. Um, but I would think it, you would call some functions to generate some type of pipeline. Um, and um, so I mean, there has to be some type of compilation or something that ultimately happens to run the native um, imagination environment. If you can give any sort of high level picture for somebody that doesn't do GPU programming. Um, you mean explain how, how does the, the Vulkan driver works? I think it's quite complicated topic to, to dive into right now just but, a, just uh, a high level perspective right just as, as a as a novice for somebody that's like all of a sudden got this extra compute capability ex exposed to them you know, how do they what i mentioned before about this being a lower level api is the primary benefit of it right so um vulcan is actually a, a more difficult api to to code uh if you're not an expert developer on on graphics and uh, that's a, you know, a pro and con at the same time, if you want, because uh, being more complicated, it means that it gives you a lot more access uh, to the underlying hardware and uh, you need to, to understand the way that the GPU works uh, a lot better in order to, to optimize your content for that. Uh, on the other hand, you have full control. So, you know, with more controls <laughs> come, comes more responsibility. And... Uh, in the, the hands of expert developers that can make a huge difference on uh, on the performance of the final app. And for those developers who are not experts and they're not comfortable, uh, you know, coding uh, directly into Vulkan, uh, as we said, there are all the, the, the additional translation layers on top that uh, give you access to higher level APIs, libraries, and other things that, uh, you know, giving, uh, um, easier programmability and uh, they, they are uh, simpler to use. Just something course, like Mesa, maybe. right? So you look at a project yes, like Mesa that would provide like a GL programming layer, right? So maybe G, um, yeah. OpenGL might be a more familiar programming layer that people could use to to access the, the Vulkan drivers. Would that be accurate? Yeah, yeah. yeah. The drivers yeah, actually cool. acting as a translation layer and letting you use OpenGL or whatever you're familiar with, but on the Underneath it, it's still doing Vulkan calls, as you're saying, right? Yeah, that's all the wrappers. Uh, yeah. Exactly. It's a it's a thin layer that uh, you know translates the API and uh, passes down the the right stream of commands to, to the native Vulkan driver. Does it provide a, like OpenCL type of uh, functionality as well? Or can you are people writing OpenCL layers, right? So the like OpenCL kind of relates a little bit more to what I was 
trying to say earlier, right? You can write little kernels, yeah. right, and parallelize those little those little bits of, of code with OpenCL and allows the provides for the memory allocation between the main processor and the the, um, the co processors. Um, but I don't know if if uh, like Vulkan looks at all like OpenCL or not. Well, or Vulkan has there's a translation compute, like Vulkan has compute capabilities as well, right? So you can. Uh, develop compute applications just using Vulkan natively, um, but there are similar, you know, translation layers on top that uh, could allow you to run OpenCL applications on top of a on of a native Vulkan driver. Same as we said for uh, Angle that uh, can uh, accelerate OpenCL ES or even OpenCL um, desktop APIs on top of Vulkan. Now, while the OpenGL kind of kept on going forward. Uh... Vulcan was kind of a fork. I mean, it's a fork of AMD's original. Was it Metal? I'm trying to think what it's called, but it, it basically became OpenGL. Metal's and, Apple. Yeah, yeah, Metal's Apple. Uh, it basically came like OpenGL next. They merged in a lot of the OpenCL, a lot of OpenGL things, and they made Vulcan, which was a lot lower level language, and it could do a lot mm -hmm. of things that was really complicated in OpenGL and OpenCL, but it doesn't, you know, do all of them. But so you could. It's pretty easy to translate from Vulkan back to OpenGL. Uh -oh, but usually, you, yeah, but usually you'd write your own Vulkan application versus an OpenGL application. Yeah, if you write your own native Vulkan application, I don't think there is any benefit trying to translate that to an OpenGL ES or OpenCL or OpenGL because they are higher level uh, APIs if you want. So what you want to do is actually feed it to, to the GPU through a well-optimized driver so that it can uh, execute the best possible way. And that's exactly what Zinc does. Zinc just takes your Vulkan driver and allows you to run OpenGL on top of it. So Correct. the goal was to run desktop stuff, so. Yep, and now we are having conformance passing on uh, OpenGL 4.6 uh, through the Zinc layer. So that's uh, a quite major achievement and uh, we're really happy to see that. And we are seeing that uh, the performance is uh, is really good. And comparable to native OpenCL drivers. So, yeah, I think on the last RFC that was posted, uh, you're at 88 point something co uh, compliance, I believe, or it's, yeah. You mean on OpenCL 4.6? Yeah. No, it's it's fully conformant. Okay, fully conformant. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It has been for a few months now. Yeah, because OpenGL 4.6, there's a lot of things that are desktop only, and you can get it to work on translation to yeah. a little GPU. Yeah. Indeed, indeed. Yeah, lots of legacy applications, you know. Decades of, of development in uh, in graphics and, and gaming have been using OpenCL, and it's pretty cool to um, get uh, all this uh, wide ecosystem accelerated to your GPU through through the through the Zinc layer, and uh, of course through the effort that uh, our team put to to integrate that uh, with our optimized Vulkan driver. That's pretty awesome. So I guess just to bring it back to kind of, you know, the benefits that we're going to see on something like Eagle Play, right? Um, I think, you know, we've kind of talked about, you know, about a low level what the technology is, but maybe Robert, you want to speak to, you know, what this is actually going to enable to an end user who's now going to, you know, soon be booting up Eagle Play with the default image. Well, that's the thing for the big award community as wide. It's, it's going to open up some crazy wide open doors. In the past, we've always had, okay, this one driver, one kernel version, maybe one modules and one user space. And it's basically, here you go community, here it is, use it, don't change it. But with this, I mean, build root can have out of box acceleration. Debian can have out of box acceleration. Fedora can have out of box acceleration. If people want to run emulators or they want to do uh, number crutching, use the Vulkan um, compute stuff. Yeah, they go from, it's one image that someone wrote two years ago that just works versus, yeah. And it's no longer, people it's, it's, stuck on old stuff yep yeah. and the mesa community is pretty large the amount of translation layers the amount of optimizations going on everyone shares the back end of mesa so while imagination did their vulcan driver front end when vulcan vulcan 2.0 or opengl 5 comes out or opencl something with this interface ecosystem the animation gpu can also support that too until a point when it just doesn't have enough horsepower but this is something that yeah once the board gets in the field you can keep updating it and have mesa support or That's, even the you know, big normal one. desktop accelerations your desktop's going to okay. be faster web browsing video playback right things like that i mean the simple thing is you just load up firefox and watch a video but at the same time you're, you're not stuck on a two-year-old kernel that has you know 
updates that for security reasons it's just updated and still works so yeah for the beagle community this is huge and something that you know we've I mean, when i started what 12 13 years ago we just kind of dreamed about so we, we've largely been stuck on like specific builds that we can support right so stuff that comes out of the octo image right or specific versions of the the, the debian images where we've kind of gotten everything um integrated but it was only at certain like snapshots right this is going to make it where every version keeps working right all the new features you know, into whatever distro whatever system yeah, it can be integrated. And this allows other well, people to create their images and create their translation layers. Like, I want to do X, Y, Z. I just need the GPU to work. And then they can release it instead of, well, you got to use this. Yeah, so Plot, is this doing away with binary blobs completely? Or are there still bits in the kernel that are still binary? There's still the firmware, so. Accessible firmware. Yeah. Yeah, that's correct. The firmware, you consider this being part of, of the hardware, pretty much. So it's doing... Uh, all the the low level housekeeping on the GPU that uh, um, wouldn't be that practical for the open source community to to intervene and uh, and modify. And the firmware size isn't that bad either. It's pretty small firmware. Yeah. And I think um, for most of the silicon vendors, the same firmware should work. It's just um, like the power management hooks will have to be in the the kernel driver to enable it, I think. But yeah, otherwise it should work on... So while we're talking about TI specifically here, but if someone else was using this BX15 GPU, it could work on another silicon with the same firmware, I believe, right? Well, the, the firmware is slightly different in each GPU, right? And uh, that's why we would need to explicitly enable support for additional GPUs. Um, so we are we are starting out by having a uh, one um, rogue GPU supported, mm -hmm. and uh, the the thing is that uh, we can easily extend that to the other members of this architecture family because um, the the driver is is very very similar. There are only small differences. Uh, in between them and there there is the need for a slightly different binary though which is on on per gpu basis yeah because i think on the am62 it's just the bxe but for example like the mediatek um one also works because that was one of the, and the original BXE chromebooks also. that we worked on but yeah 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 we use that as a development plat platform as well so yeah we, we enabled that and it's i do just... see one question here from a, from a user. They're asking if you have any plans for uh, previous generation devices as well. So they're asking about BeagleBoom Black, which would be, I believe, S SGX 530. Yeah, I think that's the million dollar question is like, <laughs> will iMation <laughs> help or hinder it, the SGX 530 GPU? Yes. So <laughs> I, I'm afraid we don't have any plans at the moment to, to support the SGX family. Uh, we have started with Rogue. Um, because we think that this is uh, how we can make the, the biggest impact to, to our customers and the open source community with new devices that are becoming available now. And uh, we plan to be looking into the future as well and enable our uh, newer and higher end GPU generations as well with an open source driver. That's the plan right now to be more forward looking rather than... Um, look into retrofitting the the existing uh, open source driver to to all their devices we, which effectively you know wouldn't be as easy as well because sgx is a completely different architecture so yeah the road not, was... not, not, not a trivial task by any means and honestly when we look back the sgx 530 i mean we're talking 2005 era it's finding yeah, someone yeah, that yeah. actually worked on it and understands the core and then have them try to support it in mesa yeah that's not a task you just yeah indeed <laughs> I, i'd feel sorry for anyone in imagination that was put that task it's it's more of a if the data books still exist on how to do it yeah and digging into the history yeah, <laughs> yeah. You, you mentioned um risk five is is, hmm. is there a way to execute um you know risk five opcodes right is there a binary you know risk five um layer or element right to this right so i'm, I'm trying to figure out what's the tie-in with risk five maybe it's used underneath the covers but what's what how would that be exposed to users um so risk five can can be a target application processor of the soc that uh, uses our driver uh and when it comes to the open source driver specifically uh we haven't been testing that with uh, a risk five based soc but we see no challenges. Uh, well, 
of course, there will be some you know technical issues to, to sort out, but uh, no big architecture challenges uh, should be there, and uh, we expect that uh, very soon we can smoothly run our open source driver on a risk five based uh, SOC. Um, similarly, as to what we are now achieving with our proprietary DDK, which can smoothly run on risk five based as well. It's like there's two parts to that, because iMation was very interested in the risk five community. So there's, it's really easy to put the iMation on like, for example, this board has iMation IP in there, but at the same time, iMation was also using risk five inside their IP. So I don't know if the, the BX, if you could talk about what architecture is inside the BX, but I know iMation has been going towards more risk five internal cores than third party cores. So. Yeah, true. So we, we are using RISC V uh, within the GPU as uh, the accelerator for our firmware um, and different GPU generations have and, you know, product lines have different um, firmware CPU inside them. And that's and that's pretty close to because um, on your uh, iMation University program, you actually have a course teaching how to use a RISC V. And I think that's the Swerve core. And isn't that, I would say, a it's close or similar to the cores you guys actually use inside your part. So while you're teaching risk developers how to use risk five on FPG, it's kind of like, imagine, I mentioned it has an intuitive knowledge of that core because they're actually using it. Indeed, yeah. So we are using that and it's the starting point uh, for our own, um, you know, generation of uh, risk five CPUs. So you also mentioned uh, some, uh, something along the lines of neural net acceleration, right? Using, um, you know, the, the, the GPU cores. I think that you have some, some separate uh, IP blocks specifically targeting, um, you know, neural network processing. But is something like what's on uh, the AM six two five that's you know, and the Beagle Play is that something that um, we can get some lift for um, neural net inference? Yeah, we have a neural network accelerator, and of course, we can accelerate this kind of workload on the GPU as well. And uh, we have the, the software tools and frameworks that uh, facilitate both paths through a dedicated accelerator, our uh, NNA, or our GPU. And uh, yeah, these, these are both, uh, you know, valid paths of acceleration. Uh, of course, GPU offers more uh, programmability and uh, it's better suited to run um, new, new kind of uh, uh, neural network applications that... Uh, haven't necessarily been the, the target of uh, of a fixed function uh, accelerator. Something that we can look at uh, working together on for some demos um, to show it off in the near future. Ah, indeed, yeah. We, we do have demos and I think that uh, we are presenting them in um, all the, the different events that we attend. So that's, that's still using like the, the Vulkan layer, so we could use the open source, or is that just using the DDK, right? Is that something that we can do with the open source Vulkan driver in a, in a um, you know, a, a performant way? Mm, depends on how you you want to um, how you want to accelerate your your workloads on the on the GPU. Uh, the most typical path is through OpenCL, so that's not something that is currently supported through through the Vulkan open source driver. Um, now, whether or not you could use Vulkan compute capabilities to, to write some ML content, um, uh, I guess that's a possibility. And IMation's university program on the, the Beaglebone, uh, Beaglebone Black AI64, they actually use and they show how to use it on the OpenCL cores. So do in neural networks. But it uses uh, Ma Imagination's OpenCL driver right now. So is there tool... a suitable translation layer, though? Because if we're not really you know, pushing OpenCL for the open source driver, you know, what would be the open source uh, translation layer, right? I mean, you know, how to, you know, yeah. Yeah, there is that. There are translation layers that uh, take from OpenCL to, to Vulkan. But is that going to be you know, reasonably performant, or is there is there better translation layers that would, would be for suitable for open source um, so that, there are on, the, on these GPUs. So there are two layers. There's the Clover OpenCL driver, and then the, the new in, Intel Rust base CL driver. And so these are just translation layers to do later versions of OpenCL. But the problem is, um, all my 
automation is highly optimized for their OpenCL driver and then all the tools that get tied to it. So it's just a matter of years of optimization versus something that's still relatively new. So out of yeah. the box, yeah, not a chance, but. But I, I mean, what does the, the community really look at in terms of, I mean, is it compelling to spend some time on on the rogue um, GPUs rather than an NPU or um, you know, some other um, you know, platform? I know if you look, you look at the, the, the big one AI64, you look at the, the C7 plus MMA, right? There's a lot of open tooling there for that could can really be optimized by the community for um, neural um, you know, acceleration, right? For inference engine acceleration. Um, but I know that people are looking for more generic programming layers. Um, you know, in, in the in the past, you know, TI has gone away from even the OpenCL based support, um, more um, just native programming environment, right? Um, and um, you know, APIs for for the OpenVX um, you know, programming layer, right? For for accessing the um, the accelerated kernels, right? And I'm I'm just you know, maybe maybe it really is not something that's like a a good CUDA editor, right? You know, but um, you know, just trying to understand what the um, what the extent of the opportunity is for people to use the the Rogue series on Beagle Play, especially um, to do some improved inference engine support, right? I should have made that a better question. <laughs> um, but I'm not sure I can, I can comment. But yeah, yeah, give give it a try, maybe to to you know. Let me know if you have something more um, specific in mind. And what one you... of the problems of the AI64 too is it's a prior Rogue GPU. So we have the BX on the AM62. The TDA4 is the 8XE part. So it's Rogue family, but it's different. Yeah. And if you're doing neural net stuff, right? I mean, you'd really just target the C7 plus MMA plus the C6 DSP cores, right? So um, those have um, you know a lot of um, you know there, there's there's tool chains that you can use to program those natively, um, and um, right. So, and there's lots of sample code from from TI that, that implements the like the the TensorFlow light acceleration. Um, you know, so that you know, that makes a, a good target. But of course, that's a you know a more expensive <laughs> solution that not everybody needs eight tops worth of inference engine support, right? So, you know, some lighter might be interesting for people um, if they can make the programming layers work right. And that's part of the fun too, is well on the GPU side, we can just use Mesa for everything. On the C7, the C6, we have a different compiler, a different programming stack, different programming environment. If we get if we get all three of those, just to use Vulkan Mesa, it would solve a ton of problems. Yeah. But, so, yeah. so maybe that's maybe. what we need is a TI to push C7, C6 support into Mesa Vulkan. And then- maybe. Yeah. But at least those of uh, the, the build environment, I think for us is still really tough for the 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 uh, the open VX stack. Uh, but it is at least open source, right? Um, it's just not necessarily in a clean build environment. Yeah. At least we've moved on. Oh, here's the the firmware blobs. You just stick in the C7, C6. Like here's how you can build it. Don't try. Just <laughs> just load the open VX firmware. If if we could have like that for Vulkan. That makes them interesting. But, but if, if if we were able to take all the open stack, forget neural network stuff, right? If we we're able to take some amount, because we've got two other boards um, with rogue GPUs, right? The the, the BeagleBone AI64, Beagle5 ahead. Um, both have the rogue class, not just the like cause the older boards are SGX. Um, you know, um, and I think the the well the ahead actually has a little bit more because it has the imagination and PU core as well. I believe it's the imagination and uh, neural neural processing core there. Um, so, um, but if there is an opportunity to to use for AI sixty four and ahead, you know, some of these open firmwares, it sounds like there's a possibility those the the firmware loads for working with Vulkan might come. Somewhere. I think that's part of the fun too. Is well, GPU is pretty standard. You stick this in the kernel, drop you know this kernel directory. Plot. How is the the MMA's kernel driver been going as far as where to stick it in the kernel driver, which user space to use, because there's none of that right now. It's the situation is pretty much whatever automation wants to do. It's you could just write it themselves because there is no there is no open source Mesa for NNA and MPUs. Um, 
correct or and it's it's a different kind of uh, processor right so um however um we we are looking into what we can do in the open source space to to accelerate uh you know machine learning workloads uh we have been using uh open source as the baseline for all these uh, software tools that we are using uh the, the dvm framework has been used um you know as, as the starting point so yeah it, it, it is open source that is uh, in the heart of it and uh, we will be exploring ways to uh, contribute back to the open source community as well. So that might be a good question too for, for any developer that is using IMation's MPU or N NNA, what software stack should you use to start you know, working on your application? I mean, with GPU, we know, I'll well, just use Mesa or Vulkan or OpenGL, just write OpenGL program. What direction are you having your developers go for using the NNA, like what do you, what tools do you use? Well, we or what all language all the, do you even write in let's put it that way? Uh, all the standard frameworks, TensorFlow, uh, Pytorch, you name it, you know, every VM uh, compiler support uh, to as well. And sorry guys, I'm losing audio, so I might yeah, have to step out. I think it's can, just loud. Oh. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, not, not sure if you've heard my, my response before, but I was saying that we are supporting multiple different uh, frameworks, uh, all the ones that are supported through the, the DVM compiler. So yeah, TensorFlow, PyTorch, you name it. Um, you, uh, I wanted to do a, a, a plug at some point here. I don't know how close we're at, but, but uh, I, I do know of an um, organization looking for, for people that want to try to improve the state of open source graphics on, on Beagle Play. Um, if there are any individual developers that are looking to contribute, um, you know, there's some an internship opportunities um, for that. So um, please do come onto our, our forums or reach out on the chat to me, and I can put you in contact with the folks looking for that. Right? There's there's um, a lot of you know, interest from users of the platform, right, to to have developers engaged to try to improve the openness of the stack. So if you're an individual developer, please do. Um, reach out. Hey, Jason, on, on Discord. Mm -hmm. Jake Ragnar. Um, I, had a plot that, I don't know how close we are to kind of wrapping up, but we, based on time, we probably should. Um, is there any okay. other um, kind of topics, questions we should have asked, uh, um, things to know about imagination, the open source efforts? I think it was a really good discussion that we have, and, and thank you for the opportunity that you gave me to talk about our open source plans. Um, I think you know the we're getting very close to completing the upstreaming of our first Vulkan uh, open source driver. We're really excited about that. Um, so one step at a time. Once we achieve that that goal, uh, you will see a lot more contributions from us to the open source space, and we would be also very excited to see what the open source community can do uh, using our open source drivers as a starting point. Awesome. Graphics is primarily my focus personally. Um, I know we are doing a, a lot of things on, on the compute and uh, ML side, uh, you know, uh, of things as well. So thank you very much for coming on, especially with such short notice. So um, appreciate you making the time. Yeah, thank, thank you, you so much. Me. And hopefully we'll have you over again in the future, you know, once we have everything up and running and we can discuss how, about how great everything is. Cool. Yeah, well, I'm looking forward to the day we'd have demos just working out of the box everywhere. <laughs> well, thanks Thank everyone for watching, and we will see you in two weeks.